Gaz. Put the skids on this road, them and that new receiver. I'd like to get my hands on Mr. Doyle for just about five minutes. I'm afraid you'd have to stand in line for that, Gus. Maybe you can grin about it. This ain't your last run. I'm sorry, boy. You got anything for five? How could I? With a wife and baby to support. If I went to Jet Carson, maybe I could talk a little to keep you on. Yeah, I started with him when this line of his was just a pop. Pretty sure he'd listen to me. Gee, Tom, you're a lifesaver. Short line, room 22217, Great Lakesville in Chicago, Illinois. What is it this time? Does Mr. Doyle want us to run on second-hand steam? Oh, what is it every time? More dismissal? Yes. Yeah. It's a pity someone can't dismiss Mr. Doyle with a well-aimed sledgehammer. Oh. I'd like to apply for that job personally. My dear sir, in reply to yours of the 17th instant, allow me to point out that I have reduced my personnel to the vanishing point. Possibly you were planning to run this railroad with robots. Of course, I have only devoted a paltry 50 years to railroading, which can't be compared with four years in a law school. However, I have managed to struggle along without the aid of some egotistical half-baked nincompoop who thinks he can sit at a desk 2,000 miles away and tell me how to run my business. Moreover, Your I... Your blood pressure, dear. Drink this. Oh, what did you stop me for just as I was getting steamed up? Come in! Come in! You will anyhow. We'll wait if you see. No, no, no. Come in. Okay. Where's the mail? I haven't gone for it yet, Grandpa. Well, what are you waiting for? How's the baby got? Awful cute. Jed, I've asked a favor of you, but now they're... Well, it's about Gus here. He's an A1 fireman. I'm going to ask you to keep him on. I guess you don't realize it, Tom, but I don't run this road anymore. I'm just an office boy. I can't keep Gus on, Tom. And what's worse, I can't keep you on. Your train's been canceled. Thanks anyway for trying. It's okay, Jeb. Need any money, Tom? Oh, I'm all right, thanks. I wish I could tell you how it makes me feel seeing you lose everything you've worked for. Who says I've lost everything? Did I? I did not. I fought competition in this valley before, and I won, didn't I? It's going to take a lot more than a bull-headed receiver on those painted circus wagons to put me on the rocks, and don't you forget it. <laughs> We'll need six new trucks, Mr. Armstrong, to handle the businesses piling in. Get along with what you have for the time being. I expect to have control of the railroad within 30 days. Well, that'll give us a monopoly on the freight business. What about this new receiver? I think we'll find him quite friendly toward our interests. You see, I'm responsible for the appointment of Mr. Lawrence Doyle. Mr. Lawrence Doyle, Chicago, Illinois. Well. I suppose you're used to Deluxe accommodations, ain't you? Well, you've come to the right place. I have two elegant rooms. 
I'll, I'll take either. Now, attend to Mr. Doyle. One's upstairs and one's downstairs. Do you mind stairs? Because if you don't, the one upstairs is drier and better if you have rheumatism. But then them as has rheumatism don't like the stairs, so they stay downstairs anyway. Anyways, you better see the room. I'd love to, but right now I'm rather interested in who's been honking my horn for the past five minutes. You're right. Look at this idiot. Does he think my car is equipped with wings? I don't suppose the idiot thought at all. Now what am I supposed to do? I have it. I'll pull it out. And it's awfully nice of you not to give me a ticket, Constable. Oh, but I am going to give you one. Bizarre for the benefit of the railroad unemployed. But I'll need two. Thank you. And uh, where may I call for you? Oh, you'll have no trouble finding someone to use the other ticket. Our local girls are famous for their hospitality. Evidently, you're not a local girl. Which way to the depot, Pop? Follow a hurry and you can't miss it. Can't you hear me? Yes, sir. No, sir. Where are those claims? Where are those claims? What did you say, sir? Where in tarnation are those claims? Well, right there, sir. <laughs> the daily racing car. I beg your pardon, sir. Are you a claim agent or a jockey? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's all right. Hello. Don't you think this has gone far enough? After all, those tickets didn't entitle you to play Bloodhound. Now run along, little man. I work here. So do I. The name's Doyle. Lawrence Doyle? I'll tell my grandfather you're here. You mean to say that he has the all-fired gall to stick his face in here? Now, Grandfather, remember... Permit me to introduce... I don't need any introduction to you. One look at those glittering eyes, that selfish mouth, and that ink machine heart. You just shut up. I... This reception touches me deeply. Nothing will touch you deeply, Mr. Doyle. You're responsible for a tragic situation in this town. The people are facing starvation, and you seem to find it amusing. I don't find it amusing. Nor do I consider myself responsible for the situation. Are you insinuating that I am, you impudent young, young... Whippersnapper. Yes, certainly. If you'd have used your head and adopted a more drastic policy the past few years, you wouldn't need me now. Need you? Why, you insufferable young puppy. I'll I'll shut up. up. I've run this railroad. Right into bankruptcy. I'm sorry, Mr. Carson, but we've got to face facts. I'm the doctor now, and if I consider that surgery is necessary to save the patient's life, I'll operate. Surgery? Bah! Butchery! Very well. But remember, I'm going to stay right in this office and see that you don't steal one penny more than I can help. I know you receivers. I'm awfully sorry. And this is the dividing line. Don't you dare stretch this coin. I mean, hold this thing. Oh, keep out. 
and remember that. You mustn't get so upset. Dear. Who's upset? How about a smoke? Leave me alone. Hmm? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> I'll tell him a thing or two. You did. Now see what you made me do. Don't you think it would be a good idea if you went home and rested? And have that jacket nip think he ran me out? He won't. And you'll feel better in the morning. I'll never feel better. I hope you won't think too harshly of our esteemed president. I'm afraid he's just a little distray. Yeah, I would be too. What do you do around this mausoleum? Let me introduce myself. I am Phineas K. Trotter, claim agent for the Moon Valley Short Line. I'm glad to know you, Trotter. Hey, that last workout gave me an appetite. Where do you eat around here? At Mrs. Casey's dinner bucket right here in the yards. I was just about to partake of a light repast. Mind if I go along? It would be a pleasure. Mrs. Casey, by the way, is my betrothed. Really? How interesting. Yes. Give you a lift? No, thanks. I'd rather walk. Oh, the athletic type. You certainly remind me of Grandpa Picklepuss. Same sweet, friendly nature. carbon copy of that old dodo. Certainly seems a shame to think of the opportunity you're missing. But then if you're afraid you might fall for me. Fall for you? Why, you egotistical, insufferable, unmitigated pipsqueak. If you were the last man on earth, I wouldn't fall for you. You always take things so literally. You didn't hurt yourself, did you? Nearly sat down for a rest. Well, that settles the hiking problem. What are you doing? After all, I couldn't leave the granddaughter of our most upstanding citizen sitting in the ditch, could I? It wouldn't look right. How do you do, Miss Kay? How's your granddad? Oh, pretty well, considering. Where's your manner? Uh, Mr. Beasley, this is Mr. Doyle, the new receiver of the road. Glad to meet any friends of Miss Kay's. Could you spare a few minutes, Mr. Beasley? Sure thing. Come on up on the porch. No, thanks. I'll stay here. But even if Armstrong's rates are lower, in the long run, you're going to make a bigger profit shipping by freight. How do you figure that? Well, the condition the produce is in when it reaches the market. 
In hot, dry trucks, it's bound to wilt. But in ice, air-conditioned, refrigerator cars, it's going to reach the market in A1 condition, and you're going to get top prices. Sure, there's something in that. Now, I got a shipment to lettuce, but oh, I... Oh, that's uh... fine, Mr. Beasley. I'll spot a car in your siding tonight, and you can load it in the morning when it's nice and cool. Good day, Mr. Beasley, and, and thanks a lot for your business. Come on, before he changes his mind. That may be true of lettuce, but I'm shipping tomatoes. And as far as I'm concerned, it's just dollars and cents. As long as Armstrong gives me better service at lower rates... Now, wait a minute, Mr. Jones. I can't make you any promises, but I think that soon we can meet their service and their rates. Well, when you do, you might come around and see me again. Good day. Uh, Mr. Jones, you said it was just a matter of dollars and cents. But is it? Don't you owe the railroad something? Not a penny. How about gratitude and loyalty? Have you stopped to consider what the railroad's done for you? It brought your father out here, sold him this land at a very small down payment, taught him to turn this desert into a farm. Well, that's right, but... Uh... The railroad hasn't outlived its usefulness. All we need is the support of important men like yourself, Mr. Jones. If we had your account, others would naturally follow. The farmers all rely on your good judgment. Oh, well, if you put it that way... I knew we could depend on you, Mr. Jones. I'll have a car spotted here this evening. Oh, it'd be nice seeing you again, Mr. Jones. Drop into the office when you come to town. Yes, thanks. Goodbye. Nice teamwork, partner. We're finding out what we've got to meet in the way of competition. But we'll give Armstrong and these trucks a run for their money. Let's celebrate. How does one celebrate in this moth-eaten metropolis? Well, there are numerous ways. One could read a good book, or play solitaire, or go to a movie. Now, there you've got some. Shall I pick you up at 8? What? No luck with the local girls? No try. I prefer my secretary. Correction, please. I am not your secretary. Fine. That removes any scruples you might have about going out with your boss. You're forgetting grandfather. That's a swell idea. Flat tire. Bah! There's only one flat tire around here, and you go lallygagging with it. I won't have it. Do you hear me? The whole town can hear you. What would you say if I told you Mr. Doyle has been out getting business for the railroad? I'd say there was a catch to it. Well, we got two carloads this afternoon. <sighs> oh, we did, did we? Mm-hmm. And thanks to Mr. Doyle, we have two of our old customers back. Jones and Beasley. I'll have something to say to those two when I see him. Oh, now, Grandfather, be fair. So you're taking his side, are you? Against your own flesh and blood. Darling, your blood pressure. Oh, hang my blood pressure. Now, look here, young woman. If you so much as smile at that conniving road wrecker, Grandfather, I'll... your hat. Huh? Oh. Well, it is mine, isn't it? About all it is now. Well, go on, go on. What are you waiting for? Get out! Don't you think you've wasted enough time today, Miss Carson? I have some dictation. Take a letter to... I don't care to take any dictation from you, Mr. Doyle. What are you being paid for, to be ornamental? If so, you're getting money under false pretenses. Stranger, when you say that, smile. If you're getting paid for being objectionable, you should demand a raise. Can you sneak out for the last show? He's a light sleeper and a crack shot. Ready to go, Grandfather? Yes, I don't reckon much can be stolen around here between now and quitting time. Come along. Good night. Oh, by the way, did you lock up the stamps?
lost that Jones account has gone back to railroad. What? Yeah, he's shipping a whole tomato crop by boxcar. He lost the Beasley lettuce the same way. We've got to teach those clodhoppers a lesson. Okay. Stanley. We've lost a couple of good customers. That's tough, boss. The names are Jones and Beasley. You get that? Jones and Beasley. Yeah. You'll find their names on some boxcars spotted down in the valley. Jones and Beasley. My name's Doyle, receiver for the railroad. Are you Armstrong? No, he isn't in. I'm Glover, the superintendent. Glad to know you, Mr. Doyle. Would you have a chair? Listen, Glover. One of our refrigerator cars was wrecked last night, and a shipment of lettuce was sprayed with gasoline. That's the first I've heard of it. Too bad, isn't it? Yeah. Both the shippers happen to be your former customers. You don't suppose we had anything to do with it, do you? I know you did, but I can't prove it. Then if I were you, Mr. Doyle, I wouldn't do too much talking. I won't confine myself to talk. Get this. The next time anything happens to our shipments, you're going to wake up and find a half a dozen of those nice, shiny trucks of yours ready for the scrap heap. That's all. Oh, hello, Chief. Say, are you sure this new receiver understands about playing ball with us? He's been cutting into our business. That isn't all he's cutting. Look at those new rulings. He's got the okay from the Interstate Commerce Commission to meet our rates. Well, this is going to hit us pretty hard. We've held the farmers in line only because our rates were lower. What do you make of it? I think my Chicago attorneys picked me a very bright boy. Would you like to have him dimmed? That's not necessary yet, Glover. I think I'll go over and offer him the proper inducements. Look, why don't you let me take care of him? I'll handle it myself. Where is he? Where's who, sir? That wrecker, that vandal. Do you know what he's up to? Well, I do. He's giving us another shell towards bankruptcy. With our equipment. But, Mr. Carson, we salvaged the wheels. The wheels? Bah! Well, what are you sitting there for like a lump on the bog? I mean a bump on the log. I said I wanted Doyle. Trotter, tell Tom Wilson I want to see him right away. Mr. Doyle? My name's Armstrong. Oh, I just came from your office. I'm sorry, I missed you. Sit down. I've been looking forward to having a talk with you. You and I have to come to some sort of an understanding. Exactly, Doyle. That's what I had in mind when I had you appointed. Really? Yes, you owe your job to me, you know. I knew it. You conniving, two-cross, double-facer, you, you cross-faced... Oh, you rats! You'll hatch your death to be plots in my own office, will you? Mr. Carl, well, I'll put a stop to it. Now, wait a minute. Armstrong, I had no idea that you picked me. But I'm taking this job seriously. I'm going to build this road up and not break it. You'll lick before you start, Doyle. The whole town's against you. Even Carson. Why not be smart? Cooperate with me and make yourself an additional 20000 above your receiver's fees. It's very tempting. You certainly must want this road pretty badly. Well, how about it? You sent for me, Mr. Doyle? Yes, Tom, you're just in time. 
Now that our rates are even, Armstrong, I'm out to beat your time. How about it, Tom? If I turn you loose with that cannonball freight, and you cut two hours off the run to paradise? I think I can do better than that, Mr. Doyle. You'll get every break on equipment. You make the run Saturday. Saturday. That all? That's all. Just what do you expect to gain by this? Mainly a crack at the farmer's cooperative contract that you've been getting fat on. I'm gonna run you out of business, Armstrong. You're not a legitimate trucking outfit. You're a racketeer. Now get out. You're making a bad mistake, fella. I'll have a new receiver here in 10 days. Throw him out, Trotter. Yes, sir. <laughs> One more thing, Tom. Don't take any chances. We're not out to prove how fast the daredevils can yank tonnage over this line. I understand, Lou. You want a fast schedule set up, but one we can make every day, rain or shine. Exactly. Good luck, Tom. We're counting on you, Tom. Don't you worry, Miss Kay. Carson makes it a majority. Larry. Yes? There was something else I wanted to tell you. Something I want to tell you, too. What? Oh, no. You first. Oh, just that I'm awfully ashamed of the things I thought about you. What were you going to tell me? Oh, nothing. Just that... That's the train. We've got to get to Maggie's and get those reports. Boy, that sure was a close shave. Yes, it certainly was. raising his voice. Trotter, throw that man out. And what did I do? Crawl under your desk. No. In an instant, my coat was off, my sleeves rolled up, and as I advanced on that despicable truck driver, he arose, sneering in my face. I saw red. I mean... Why did you say that he told you to throw Armstrong out? Oh, certainly. Where was I? Seeing red. Seeing red. I hurled myself at Armstrong. Though so the receiver's an honest man. It's a great wrong we've been doing the by. Yes, yes, of course. We struggled. I might have known all along there never was a blackguard by the name of Doris. My indignation gave me superhuman strength. I hurled him to the floor. He fell with a terrific crash. Well, he fell with a terrible crash. What did you do to Mr. Armstrong then? Well, pardon me, my love, but uh, I, uh, I have an appointment. Good evening, Miss Kay. Good evening, Maggie. Mr. Doyle. 
I hope he'll forgive me for the, what I said the other day. I was a bit hasty, like. What was it, Maggie? I've forgotten. The minute I clapped eyes on you, I knew you for the fine, upstanding, honest young fellow that you are. Now it's me head you'll be turning with your blarney? Blarney, nothing. I'm no fool. I know what you've been doing single-handed. Single-handed? Oh, no. I've had Trotter's help. Maggie, the reports on the run are coming over your phone. I hope you don't mind. Mine? Oh, that's grand. I'll go tell the boys. <laughs> Where's my granddaughter? Haven't seen her, Mr. Carlton. Say, old Tom got that special run over to Red Butte in 11 minutes flat. I didn't ask you about the run. I asked you about my granddaughter. Uh, Maggie Casey. Going home, Mr. Carlton? Look here. I may not run this road anymore, but nobody's telling me when to go home. I'm going to stay here as long as I like. I'll take the message. Hello? He did the first 10 miles in 11 minutes. That's full of them. Good work. Burn them up, Tom. <laughs> we'll show them truck drivers a thing or two about speed. That's too fast for old equipment. Oh. 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 Through Summit like a streak. Whoopee! I knew it. <laughs> Hey, darn fool. Maggie Casey's. Ninety-seven, summit, two eleven. Oh. Gee, Willikins, look at that. He said he'd make the run in four hours. If he does, we'll get plenty of tonnage from the co-ops and most of the fellows can go back to work. <laughs> Outside of Black Rock Tunnel, Tom and the fireman killed. Oh. Why would murderer? Come on, men, get out the wrecker. He killed old Tom as sure as if he'd shot him. Stays off crews of track men, and then he orders that speed with old equipment. The murdering penny pincher. And he thinks he can pull the wool over our eyes with this. A thousand dollars reward will be paid for the arrest and conviction the person or persons responsible for wrecking freight train X-19 at Black Rock Tunnel. Lawrence Doyle, receiver. <laughs> does he think we're fools? Well, we're not. Who does he think he's kidding? A filthy hypocrite. Did you read the editorial? Oh. Get a load of this. The receiver hasn't far to look for the man responsible for last night's wreck. In his mirror, he will find the man who ignored safety for personal glorification and gambled with the lives of two good men. That's right. You're telling us. Poor old Tom. Yeah. Look at that. Well, we gonna let him get away with it? No. My gosh, no. Murderer. Let's get it. What are we waiting for? Four men to be killed? No. Gone crazy. They're coming to Mob Doyle. Let's get that Maggie, what can we do? We we'll have to get him out of town. That mob's gone crazy. Come here, Zeb. What's the parade for? I didn't know it was a holiday. Mary. They're after you. My car's down here. Take you. And and don't come back. 
Boy, that is a mob. This is no time for bravery. Every man and woman out there hate you. I'm not brave. I'm scared stiff. Besides, we Doyles are notoriously poor runners. Thanks for warning me. Before you men do anything, you better make sure that you've got the right man. You're not fooling us, Eddie. We're Tom's mates. Everyone! Yeah, and Jake, too. If you get on full section crews, there wouldn't have been a loose rail. There wasn't a loose rail. I got something to say here, too. Now listen, men. In all the years we've worked together, have you ever known me to failure? No. no. Have I ever made you a promise that I didn't keep? No. no. Have I ever lied to you? No. Well then, when I tell you something I know to be true, you'll believe me, won't you? We show sure no. What is it? Sure. Well, there wasn't a loose rail. Oh, I I now listen, I didn't trust him. So I checked up on it myself. And men, he took every precaution that either you or I could have taken. And Tom told me himself that he asked him to be careful. The roadmaster will tell you that he ordered an official investigation of every inch of track from here to paradise. Listen, men, somebody's out to wreck this road. A carload of tomatoes doesn't smash itself. Gasoline doesn't spray itself over a shipment of lettuce. The wreck that killed those two men last night tied up this entire road. And who gets the freight that we lose? Take that back or prove it. I can't prove anything yet, Glover. But get this. I'm putting on armed guards, and the next time you or your men set foot on railroad property, you'll regret it. This platform's railroad property, isn't it? Yes. So you flopped, eh? <laughs> and how? Shut up! Thought it out. Well, your muffin, this may cost us the farmer's cooperative contract. So I muffed, eh? I told you we ought to get rid of that Doyle bird. The farmers are meeting tomorrow. That tonnage contract will be awarded. If the railroad gets it, it's curtains for us. Well, here's your chance. It's about time. And we can offer the farmers economical and efficient service. I'll be at your office at 2.30 p.m. to meet any competitive bid. Be yours. Hello. Just a moment. It's for you, Larry. Thanks. Yes? This is one of the new specials, Guard in the Yards. I want to report a door open on a loaded reefer. BFE 51040, track six. That looks like it's been prowled. I'll look into it right away. Trace that call, Kay, will you please? Hello. Hello, operator. Where'd that call come from, please? Yard master's office? Thank you. Type that up and I'll sign it when I come back. Then you run along home.
No, no, thank you. Well, well, where's Larry? I can't find him. Well, you've picked a fine time to lose him. He's under your feet right up to the day of the cooperative meeting, and then you can't find him. Bah! Something must have happened to him. Everything that Larry's been working for depends on that contract today. The darn fool. If he's not here, we... Well, he can't get it. We'll see about that. <laughs> Come to order, gentlemen. We'll dispense with the minutes and get down to brass tacks. Uh, right on the dot, Mr. Armstrong. The Armstrong Corporation's always on the dot. I wonder what's delaying Doyle. Possibly he realizes he can't meet this bid. I hope his trains keep better time than he does. <laughs> Sorry to be late, gentlemen, but better late than never. Here's our bid, Mr. Knox. This offers to meet the Armstrong bid, but it's signed by Mr. Carson. Well, what difference does that make? Because your road's in receivership, Mr. Carson. It's only legal representative is the receiver. Is that so? Well, let me tell you something. I've signed papers for this road ever since... Never it mind, was... darling. Never mind. Seeing as how Mr. Doyle don't think enough of us to show up, I move to give the contract to Armstrong. The rates are the same. The rates may be the same, but our time's faster. Our new skate schedule, I mean our new freight schedule, is four hours from here to paradise. Can you beat that? Faster than any train you've got, for money marbles or chalk. Why not make it for the co-op contract? If a qualified representative of the road were here, I'd take up that proposition. You're called, Armstrong. I'll take that bet. Well, where in blazes have you been? I'll tell you later. Very well, gentlemen. We'll award the contract to the bidder making the fastest run next Saturday, starting at 2 p.m. But this is ridiculous. The railroad hasn't a chance. Don't be too sure, Armstrong. You can't put the whole railroad in a refrigerator car. I don't follow you. You will. Oh, bah! <laughs> Yes, I told Abe to give it all he had. Fresh. Boy, we certainly are traveling. Look at those houses, Todd. Never traveled like this before. Look at that. Any plans? Permission, we take off.
bone dry. Why, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. There go the trucks. Start refilling that tank right away. We can. They smashed the valve. The vandals. How much water in the tank, Ben? Only about knee high to a ghost. What is it? We should have brought a couple of spare valves instead of these guns. If you can't use it, maybe I can. And there they go with the contracts. the next creek and form a bucket brigade. We'd be lucky if we found one drink in that creek. I could take that gladly with a lot of ice in it. Boy, you've got it. Got what? Hey, Ben, start a roller. Without water? We'll blow up the boiler. I'll take that responsibility. Start the engine. All you trainmen get aboard that first reefer. Trotter, you get up there with him. We're going to need all the help we've got. Yes, sir. What are we going to do for water? Ask the receiver. He's got it on the brain. Bust up the ice and pass it back to tender. Potter, you and three men follow me. Pass that ice along as fast as you can. All set? All right, let's go. Let's go. I'll, I'll free. It'll do you a lot of good. You're too hot-blooded anyway. Now take off your coat. Come on, take it off. Just past Milford. Truck still leading. Got the contract, Bob? Yes. Whoever comes in first gets it. Want to give it to me now? Thanks for this contract, Mr. Knox. And thanks for putting all these men back to work. But where's Grandfather?
wait a minute. Grandfather, where have you been? Where do you think? A tropics? Arrest that man, Sheriff. I'd love to. <laughs> and those two men, too. What do you mean by that? Why, this is ridiculous. Oh, it is, is it? <laughs> you just wait till you read the confession he just signed. But I... I didn't have anything to do with wrecking that freight. I swear I didn't. It was his idea. He told Stimey to do it. <laughs> Work, Connor. <laughs> and you think I didn't believe you when you told me how you threw him out? <laughs> Might as well take along the confession, Jed. Oh, this? Well, you're welcome to it. Well, maybe you better have it framed, Jed. I reckon you won't be getting any more of them. <laughs> 